Good morning, friends. I just want you to know that I am on an exciting adventure this morning. I am at Barn Hill Orchards in Lono, right? That's right. Right. And I have with me, uh, look at these strawberries. <laughs> I have Echo here, one of my new friends. And I have Sandy. Sandy yeah. here. And they are sisters. Can you believe it? Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, listen, I wanted to bring you down here because this is strawberry season in Arkansas, and these lovely ladies uh, have been doing this for how long? Well, we've been in this building several years. Uh, we've been doing the drive through for three years. We started uh, with the COVID. When that hit, we had the um, online and drive through So, yeah. Can you believe I didn't know it? <laughs> So I'm always talking about um, to um, everybody at the Sadie's Kitchen about you pick places that they need to go to. And so this is Barnhill Orchards and there's there's a lot more here than just strawberries. So what else do you have? Well, we don't do you pick. We pick them and have them ready for you at the drive through but we also have fresh vegetables. We do, uh, we've got broccoli and cabbage and collards and we do uh, lettuce and onions right now. And starting in June, we'll start doing our blackberries and blueberries, and then we'll have corn and all the other vegetables all summer long. Right, so I'm coming from the Rock, and I know you have cars driving up, so they're coming through the drive through huh? But can you tell people how you get to uh, Barnhill Arches? Well, I'll tell you what, off of I-40, if you're coming out of Little Rock or coming from Memphis, you're going to take exit 169, and that's called Remington, and you're going to come six miles straight north to Cabot can't miss us. We're on the right-hand side of the road. As you can see, a big red barn. It says Barnhill Orchards. And then we're about uh, five miles south of Cabin. So either way, you can hit us up on Highway 89. And I'm going to take two of these lovelies back to my kitchen. And we're going to make some strawberry preserves and some syrup and uh, strawberry shortcake. And we want to thank these ladies. Uh, the cameraman's back there saying, all right. <laughs> thank you, Miss Sadie. I thank just want to thank these ladies for allowing me to take them away from their business. As you can see behind us, cars are driving up. It's very easy to get here. I mean, we got here in about 25 minutes. Come through the drive-thru, keep going. I feel very safe. You don't have to pick them. Look at that. <laughs> you don't have to pick them. And boy, do they smell so good. They are delicious. Yes, thank you, ladies. Thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate you appreciate coming you. out. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Right, Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Hello, 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 my friends, and welcome, welcome back to Sadie's Kitchen. It has been a day. We have been down to Barnier Orchards, and we had a great time. If you want to go on a great road trip, just head on out and get down there and get you some fresh uh, vegetables, but mainly get you some fresh Arkansas strawberries. There is a difference, I'll tell you. They taste uh, very juicy and sweet and it's just this time of the year where they come right out of the field and You can do all sorts of things with them and we're going to do just a few today But if you have some fresh strawberries Certainly you can make strawberry preserves like we're going to do today Have your first canning session in Sadie's kitchen and at the same time you can take these stra lovely strawberries and you can make all sorts of things, strawberry shortcake, strawberry syrup. Um, you can make the strawberry berry topping uh, that you might want to look at on my other video that I did. But we're going to make some strawberry preserves today. And I just want to share with you uh, the recipe that I'm using. But before I do that, I want to share other thing, one other thing. At Barnier Archers, they have fresh flowers cut and I got this bouquet and they are absolutely beautiful. Um, there are so many things that you can get there, including squash and cucumbers. They even have fresh eggs. So we're gonna move into our canning session. I'm gonna wanna share a few things with you um, about canning. Anything that you see on Sadie's Kitchen about canning, just know that the recipes are going to come from one of my favorite canning books. Uh, preservation is going to be one of these ball uh, canning books and the ball canning book is the official canning book for the National Center for Home Food Preservation uh, you always want to be safe when you're canning and you want to make sure that you um, you follow 
uh, just the bottle. It's it's one of the greatest hand uh, handbooks that you can use for canning. The bottle cookbook is a cookbook that my mom used. I have her old old uh, canning cookbook, and then I also have uh, all the canning recipes that came from the home extension office in the county that I lived in, which comes from every county. Um, in the United States, they have a home extension office that will talk to you about home preservation and fermenting and all the good things you do with fresh food uh, that you would do at home. So this is one of my favorite ones right here. And this is just um, another one. It's it's also the ball preserving um, cookbook. And we're going to, to use a recipe from it uh, today. And I have all of my ingredients over here to the right of me and I share those with you just a few things I uh, when you are canning you want to make sure that whatever vegetables you get that they're very fresh uh, don't buy vegetables and wait a week later and decide to can them you want to do them right then so the recipe today calls for six and a half cups of sugar and it calls for um, the recipe calls for one lemon, but you want to put in the blender and blend it up so that um, it's kind of like mush and you don't have any seeds in it or any kind of um, rind that's left in it. It's just all blended up together. And then we have six tablespoons of pectin. Now the thing about pectin, pectin is used in most jams and jellies. But there are always two kinds. There's the dry and then there's a liquid kind. But the recipe will tell you rather it wants you to use the liquid or the dry pectin. And I, of course, always love a sale. So at the end of the summer, when there's anything left on the shelves, I always go and buy what I need. So for this recipe today, we're going to use dry pectin. And that's all you're going to use. Uh, we're going to make sure that your fruit or vegetables before canning, that it's always clean, uh, no sand or dirt, and that all the stems have been removed from the strawberries and wash them uh, twice if you can. We're going to slice these up, dice them up once we've cleaned them, and we're going to put them in uh, what I call a jam pot. If you don't have a jam pot, let me show you what one is. Hold on just a minute. This is a jam pot right here. And a jam pot is, is very heavy on the bottom. And anytime you're cooking jams and jellies or preserves or syrup or anything like that, you wanna make sure that the bottom is very heavy because if it's not, uh, it's going to stick and you may have to uh, start all over again if you burn it. But I got this from Amazon. Uh, it's very sturdy, but you want to have one of those if you do a lot of canning like I do. The other thing that um, you're going to need are some jars. And we're going to be using a half pint jars today. I put them in the dishwasher. They've been sanitized. All the utensils that we're going to be using have been sanitized. I um, just want to make sure everything's clean because there's a possibility if it's not clean and you crossbreed things, then you're going to end up with botulism and that is not something that you want to do. Uh, so we don't want to make anybody sick, but canning is easy and it's so much fun. You just got to make sure that you follow the recipe in the ball canning book because the ball canning book for me is official and it has been for my family of canners. <laughs> so we're gonna get started, but I wanna let you also know that I am going to um, probably split this in half and some of these strawberries, the ones that I don't use, I'm gonna put them in a Ziploc bag and freeze them. I'm going to pick out a few of them and we're gonna come back and make a strawberry shortcake. If you like this video, please, hit the like button, subscribe, and share Sadie's Kitchen with your friends and give me a thumbs up. And I love messages, so if you would just write me a message, I will leave this recipe um, down in the description box. Stay tuned with me. We're gonna go over to the stove, put our jam together, and I'll share with how you put it in the jars 
and then we'll come back and make a quick strawberry shortcake and taste it with these fresh strawberries, Arkansas strawberries. All right, we've got our eight cups of strawberries in our jam pot. And if you don't have a jam pot, you just use a heavy stock pot that you already have at home. And we also have, we're going to be water bath in our, our jars that I have sanitized. So I washed them in the dishwasher and they're in the oven now so they'll stay hot. And then we have our water ready over here for our hot water bath. So we're going to bring this um, to a rolling boil um, after we add all of our pectin. We had six tablespoons of pectin that we added. And this is the lemon that I put in the uh, food processor. You use a lemon peel, the entire lemon. Um, and then we had our six cups of sugar. But we're not gonna put the sugar in yet. We're gonna mix this pectin and the lemon. And we're gonna bring this to a rolling boil. I hope you all know what a rolling boil is. A rolling boil is when it's boiling and even though you stir it, it won't stop um, boiling. But during this process, if we see any foam on top of the strawberries, we can just scoop that off and keep it rolling. But this is going to get hot and um, come to a boil. And when it comes to a rolling boil, we'll let it roll for a one minute and then we'll add our six cups of sugar and let it come back to a rolling boil for three minutes and after that we are ready to put it in our hot jars if you're canning just know that hot food goes in hot jars and that's what we are going to do today we have our lids over here that are being sanitized and all of our equipment i told you earlier that it had been sanitized. So right now we'll just wait and let this come to a boil. As you can see, we have come to a rolling boil and I'm stirring it and it's still boiling. And so we can, I've been stirring for a while so we can go ahead and add our sugar in at this time. We've added our six cups of sugar and we will stir this and then it must come to another rolling boil for three minutes and then we'll be ready to dry it up. It smells so good, it smells so good. come to a boil again. And comes back to another rolling boil. We're counting our three minutes. Okay, as you can see our jam, we got most of the foam gone and we are going to jar up one jar. You have to bring um, your jar to fill it up to a fourth of an inch and so this is our fourth of an inch right there which means we're going to bring it up to this line right here and we'll know what that is you can always buy one of these and have it ready for your canning Tell you your recipe will usually tell you how far to fill up the jar, whether it's a fourth of an inch, a half an inch, a third of an inch, or an inch. So we are going to jar it up now. I'm gonna stir this around so I can get a few strawberries in each one of our scoops here. Mm -hmm. You want to have a dipper when you're canning. And you want to have a funnel. 
we have it all. about a fourth of an inch. This is a half pint jar and you always want to debubble. That means you want to make sure there's no air pockets in your jam, jellies, or preserves. I'll just stick it off in that one. Make sure you wipe the rim because you want to make sure that this process like it's supposed to. And you can't have any food on the rim of the jar. Ball candy says that you don't have to really wash your lids anymore, but I'm so used to doing it. I've washed them in, in some boiling and sterilized them in some boiling water. Then you want to put your ring on fingertip tight. You don't want to screw it really hard, just fingertip tight and back off of it. We'll do one more. We're going to get the rest of these ready. We're going to put them in a hot water bath for 15 minutes. A hot water bath means that this hot pot over here, uh, we're going to put the jars in there and there's like two inches of water above the jar and we're going to let it come to a rolling boil, the water with the jars in it and they need to boil for about 15 minutes and then they'll be ready to take out. Because these jars are hot, you always want to have a jar lifter. If I pick this up and I can take it over there and drop it off in my hot water bath canner. So we'll finish these up, get them in the hot water bath canner and we will make a strawberry shortcake in just a minute. Okay, we're getting ready to remove our jars out of the hot water bath. You always want to turn the top away from you so the steam will not go in your face. I can do it better without a glove on. Pull it out. And there we go. They, these stayed in the hot water bath for 15 minutes. Water still hot. This is a very, very small water canner. I have three different sizes. This is a small one for half pint jars. And then I have um, a medium size and a large one. And why do I have so many canners? Because you can take the girl out of the country, but my husband say you can't take the country out of the girl. So we have six more jars and we're going to put those in and let them stay in for 15 minutes and then we'll come back again. We are all done with our preserves and boy what a good time did we have. I just want to thank my two new friends Echo and Sandy from Barnhill Orchards. I have two new friends and uh, I just thank God every day for uh, meeting new people and new people who are helping us in Sadie's Kitchen. So we finished our preserves and they're still kind of warm. But what I want to share with you is that when, you, when uh, your jars cool down, maybe in the morning, what I'll do is take the tops off of them because they, they really come off easy right now. I could take them off now, but I don't want to. But we got 12 jars from that ball recipe the recipe will be in the description uh, up under the video and make sure you try some arkansas strawberries they are really really good taste a little bit different from any preserves or jam you might buy in the store i want to show you because i put just um a little bit of the jam uh in the refrigerator so it could cool off these were still warm but I wanted you to see the consistency that it's going to be once it, it um, gels and once it, you can see how thick it is. That recipe is just perfect, just perfect. So don't deviate from the recipe at all. Don't add anything. Don't take anything away. Just follow the ball recipe. It's thick 
and it smells so good. Anyway, I saved some of the strawberries uh, just so we could make a strawberry shortcake. I did make the cake. Uh, it's store-bought, but I did um, use about two cups of the strawberries and added about two tablespoons of sugar. And I sliced the strawberries up, spread the sugar on them, and let them sit in the refrigerator for a while. So we're just going to put a few on top of our little cake, shortcakes here. I just love cooking. I don't know about you. I love cooking and I love feeding people and I love making people happy. People see me cooking all this food and they think, boy, does she eat all of that? No, not really. I just love feeding other people. So we got our strawberries on. Now we're going to put a little bit of Cool Whip, my favorite, on top of it. I think I may put the Cool Whip down here. I'm going to put a lot of it down there. And on each side, just like that. And we're going to take some of our preserves. Da -da 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 -da. We're going to take some and just spread it on top of that Cool Whip. Yes, look at that. Our berries. This would probably taste even better on top of a biscuit. There we go. Look at that. Look at that, guys. It is so pretty. Fresh strawberries. So delicious. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to Sadie's Kitchen. I need you. Subscribe to Sadie's Kitchen. Let's taste some of these fresh strawberries. A little Cool Whip and a little bit of that cake. Uh, look at that. One little bite. Okay, just one bite. Mmm. Mmm. These are not like the strawberries that we get from the store where we don't know where they come from. So shop locally and support our local orchards and farmers here in Arkansas or in whatever state you live in. They need your help right now. And so I am so excited that you followed me today, that you followed me down to um, Barnhill Orchard, came back, we made some desserts and now shortcake. And I appreciate you following Sadie's Kitchen. So I'll see you on the next video.